What is going on everybody? Welcome back. Today, we have a lot of things to do. I am on a super crunch time right now, so I'm not going to be recording a ton. Um, I've just been helping everybody else out, getting their cars ready, so on and so forth, and I've just been pushing my car out. And um, honestly, it runs, so it can technically still be at the track. I just want to make it pretty. So, from the last video, we did all the body work on the driver's side, and here's a better look at it in the daytime. I was fighting this one because, you know, the rain was hitting it, and I pretty much knocked out all of these other ones right here. And this whole side has been scuffed, obviously. And the roof, no body work required there. Passenger side, it's just this right here. Better look in the light. I'm going to trench this. Good morning. And uh, I'm going to trench this, put a little filler on it. This is uh, a dent, so I'm going to fill over that. And then the one on the quarter panel. No big deal. Um, like I said, I'm not going to record a lot because I want to knock this out. And I want to start removing all the glass. So with that being said, right now I'm headed to my buddy's house to go get his license plate for his... Um, Ridge line because I am going to reserve a trailer now the hook that we use is fully booked for the weekend So I got to reserve now in order for me to get a trailer and guarantee a trailer for Me to get to the track. So I'm gonna go get the license plate I'm gonna head to my grandma's house see if I got any mail got the license plate did a drive-by and uh, Took some pictures with my phone got some package right there And we'll open that when we get back to the house and show you what we got from a subscriber windshield wiper blades yeah, there's like no rubber on there at all. So, <laughs> got my replacements. Now off to Home Depot. Watch when I start working on my car. It's gonna start raining. All right, guys. So I went to Home Depot after AutoZone, after my aunt's, after my friend's house for the license plate, and at my grandma's house, we did get a few mail, which, you know, spam mail. But this one in particular was sent to me from Hunter, Hunter Tuned, right here. We spoke on Facebook about what this is and um, what he sent me. And, uh, you know, I agreed to it. Fuck it, why not? Um, let me pull this out of the bag and let me show you what's inside. So I was wondering why it was such a big ass packaging bag. So I was wondering why it was a big-ass packaging uh, envelope. It's because he sent me a ton of stickers, as well as what we were talking about. So here we... Oh, shit. It's a fucking banner. What the hell? Hunter Tuned. That is freaking awesome. And then we got some, obviously, some... Oh, shit, meat! <laughs> That's cool. I did not expect that. And uh, obviously some smaller Hunter Tuned... Uh, YouTube channel decals, Facebook as well. Be sure to check him out, guys. Um, he has some very, very, very knowledgeable content, like shows you how to do shit that a lot of other channels don't cover, cover like thoroughly. This motherfucker is talented. Okay, on to the main course. He uh, sent me some decap injectors and these supposedly flow about a thousand or a thousand two I don't remember but they flow fairly high and he wanted to contribute to the build of the H22 turbo I can hear that uh, grandpa car coming down the street <laughs> so these are the uh, decap injectors that he sells on his website which I also link in the description below if you guys are looking for a low budget high flowing injectors for E85 and I believe these are E85 compatible or a high horsepower all motor or turbo setup he sells these decaps injectors and um, these are proven Hunter is a tuner himself so he's used this in pretty much all of his builds and I believe he sent the set of these to Jeremy on Boosted Boys channel and they are going to be using it as well as I am and I originally said I had 1200 cc's for this car when they went to go tune but I didn't use it because I didn't need it and also the 1200s that I was going to use in this car belongs to my red CRX so now this car has its own set of injectors which is truly awesome thank you Hunter for doing that man thank you for 
Thank you for um, contributing to the build, man. Thank you for sending me these uh, injectors and all the decals. I would definitely stick it all over the damn place. Um, and thank you for contributing to the H22 turbo build because these injectors will definitely come in handy for having enough fuel for whatever power go I set to make and to run E85. So if you guys want to follow Hunter Tune, his links will be in the description below as well as his website, his Facebook, and his Instagram. Give my boy a follow, man. Huge shout out. And I truly appreciate your uh, contribute to the build. And I hear another fucking car coming down the street. It's the neighbor's car. That The Hyundai. So, what's up, guys? Um, so, I told you guys that I was going to do the body work and all that shit, you know, but I forgot... When, when I ended yesterday's video, Kerry's car died after his 9.5 Cuzzo did a pull and sabotaged the fucking car. Whole ton of fuses freaking blew in the car. Now it does not turn on. So last night when I ended the video, I went to the pad to uh, literally like diagnose the car, swap ECU, swap main relays, check every single fuse, every ground that I could think of. And when you put the key on, the cell light just stays on. Nothing else pops up on the dash. Nothing else works. No fuel pump prime. So I kind of Jimmy rigged it a little bit to get his ECU to get power and his fuel pump to get power. And we were able to fire the car. So I did it the most ghettoest way possible. But today, because I really don't have time to sit here and diagnose this car. So I'm doing a temporary fix, which is what I've been trying to do for this car, except... CJ sent me the switch panel Yes, so this may just turn into a switch panel uh, Video and uh, what I am doing right now is I went to the store. I got some relays right here some 30 40s uh, Four prongs or five prongs. It doesn't matter because you don't use the center one anyways got some uh, AutoZone O'Reilly switch two-way switch. Well not two-way just on and off and um, we are gonna wire the ECU on his own standalone relay power source and also the fuel pump in his on his own relay and power source because Right now it's just power to both and he has to disconnect the wire every single time So this is the ghetto right way of doing things and uh, this will get him by until the race and everything's all done before we um, Diagnose the car and figure it out correctly I'm almost certain his ignition switch is bad because last night I checked the white wire that goes to the switch which is the power wire it has a nice solder crack on it and I'm almost certain that the rest of the stuff is not getting power because of that ignition one two accessory so on and so forth um, the car runs and drives just fine the way I did it last night so doing it semi correctly would not hurt a thing other than being more safer with the correct amount of volts going to the uh, needed places. As soon as I started fucking working on the car, I was gonna tell Kerry to start sanding this fucking CRX while I was working on his shit. <laughs> and then it fucking starts raining. Mother Nature, you are not nice. Yeah. <laughs> you believe, you guys believe this shit? If you guys seen the, sorry. If you guys seen the videos before this one, you guys know that I also mentioned that it started raining as soon as I started touching the freaking car. I touched the freaking CRX because of all my shit right here, and it starts freaking raining. I know y'all listening to me out there. This is not, this is not cool. I took off my jacket because it wasn't raining. Yeah. Now it's freaking raining. All right, so I, I hope you guys can hear this, and I hope you guys can um, see what it is that I am doing. I'm going to pull up this diagram right here, and I'll put it up. Uh, somewhere on the screen where you guys can see my work and a diagram at the same time So while I explain it to you guys you guys would visually see what it is that I am talking about Okay, this is a 3040 uh, 12 volt relay and there are four prongs or five prong version of this I have both but we're not going to be using the center one. Okay, and uh, To wire this on its own standalone not using like the signal wire for the fuel pump for instance because uh, ignition goes on, main relay kicks on, main relay sends power to ECU, let the ECU know that it's ready to fire, and then ECU sends a signal back for the fuel pump to turn on, which is why you guys hear that prime on the key on position. And uh, because we are not using that wire, we are going to wire this differently. So our signal wire is going to be on a switch to another power source. 
rather than on the OE wiring harness side. So on the relay, there are number labels right here at the bottom. We have 30, 86, 87s, and 85s, okay? And um, I'm gonna show you guys this one relay, um, but I am gonna be bridging them because they're gonna be sourcing from each other. So on one relay right here, these four, 85 is going to be a ground wire this guy right here we're going to put a ground here and we're going to ground it to the chassis which i have this ring terminal for and then power is going to be onto right here at the bottom 30. so we got ground and we have power power source fuse box battery um wherever you're getting your source from and then 87 which is the one right here on the top this is going to go to your uh whatever it is you're trying to trigger on so if i'm doing fuel pump this one right here is going to go towards the fuel pump power wire and then the fuel pump ground is obviously going to be grounded um if you're running a fan then you run this one to the positive side of the fan and uh so on and so forth so 86 right here this is supposed to be used by your signal wire. So if you're doing fuel pump for an example, the main relay has a, for EF I believe, it's a yellow black wire on the main relay. And you would take that and put it here so that way you can uh, get signal for when the ECU is ready for the fuel pump to turn on, that wire will tell the relay to click over and then send power to the fuel pump. In my case, I am not using the signal wire for the slot 86. I am actually going to be using on the toggle switch because, like I said, we are running our own harness system for my fuel pump and ECU. So instead of running the signal wire, I am actually going to be running a toggle switch right here. And uh, one side of it is going to go to a power source wherever it is that I'm getting it from. And then running it to this guy so that way when I click the switch to on, it's gonna give power to the relay to tell the relay to kick on to do its job to send the correct amount, amount of voltage to your source. So I'm gonna get this wired up and then I'll show you guys how it looks. Free car wash for everybody. Now, this may look super confusing, okay? Bear with me here. Because I am using two relays and I'm obviously sourcing it the exact same way, this right here is the power wire, right? This is uh, coming probably from the fuse box because I put a ring terminal at the end of it right here. So because these both need to be powered, so I just pretty much bridged them together. Same goes for the ground right here. And uh, these are bridged together as well. And then uh, 86 these guys are on the switch which is supposed to be connected to the signal wire from your um your stock harness but because i'm not running the signal wire i am actually just going to run uh toggle switches to let the relay know when to turn on so pretty much when you turn the switch to on position that'll turn the relay on for it to do its job to send power to your sources that you are trying to power in my case, I have one ran right here. This is gonna to go to the ECU because like I said, we have the short where the main relay is not getting powered, the uh, broken solder and ignition switch, and the ECU is also not getting power along with the fuel pump. So this is gonna to go to ECU. And then this empty one right here is gonna to go to fuel yeah. pump because the wire is still in the car and I don't wanna use any more here. The one in the car I put in last night is brand new. So I'm gonna snip that, put it here, and then we're gonna wire them all up. And the toggle switch the other end pretty much just goes to power source um, to get power to power the relay. And they are fused right here. Right now it currently has a 15, probably gonna put a 20 in it and uh, power source. So I'm gonna splice this guy into this guy since this is gonna come out from the fuse box which is the power source anyways. And then run only one instead of two. So ground, power, um, sources to what you're running it to hopefully that's not confusing but let's get that into the car got the main relay switches installed on this lower 
console plastic piece and ground right here goes to the center 10 millimeter and then the fuses linked up with the power wire right here goes into the engine bay onto either the fuse box or the battery itself and then the two extra wires coming from the relay that needs to go to your source i got one right here that goes all the way around to the ecu wire um i believe it is plug a top row all the way to the end black yellow stripe which is hooked up right here soldered and looped and then the other relay extra wire this one right here goes to the main relay over there onto the fuel pump wire which is yellow which is yellow black and then that's pretty much it for the wiring portion of it so here we are going to put the car in the on position right and obviously we have the issue of the cell light not coming on the fuel pump main relay is not kicking on here we have the ecu I'm gonna flick it on and the checking light's gonna go away. And then we got this one for the fuel pump. Kick it on. And then when you're done, turn the car off, switch off, and that off. And then master kill switch so that way those guys don't work anymore. So, kind of want to cover this a little bit here. It's it's always in my heart to help anybody and everybody that needs help when I can, whenever I can. You know, I I've given so much to so many people in the car community, whether you're here, whether you're out of state. I've sent parts out, I've given parts away, I've install parts on people cars just to get people going and um, you know I give and I give and I give and I give and I get screwed at the end of the day you know and clearly I don't learn my lesson because this has happened multiple times but you know what I'm not gonna carry on no grudge because if that's just the way people are that's just the way people are as 95 always tell me man be careful who you help out be careful who you have in your group and who you have in your circle because sometimes it could be your own people. So, um, but out of the greatness of my heart, I I am still gonna help anybody that's gonna need it. You know, especially this guy. Yep. Always. Car's always fucking up, but I take care of him. You know what I mean? But like, some people just gotta understand that, you know, if you're in the wrong, admit it. If I'm in the wrong, tell me. Because if I don't address it, that means I probably don't know. See, like, Carrie, for an example here, we're, we're all about humor, fun, and, like, jokes and shit. And this motherfucker here is funny since the day I met him. And he is not one of those people who come here when he needs help. This guy actually comes out, you know, he comes around frequently. And, uh, you know, he actually pays me for my time to work on his shit because he knows that... He works all day and uh, he needs his shit fixed like you would go to a regular shop, he comes to me. So for Kerry and his family that you guys been seeing recently in my videos, you know, I help these guys out because they take care of me. And um, like, I, I just want to ask you Kerry really quickly, like what do you think man, like, between me and you, our friendship, like what do you think about me in general bro? I know we fuck around sometimes, I may <laughs> seem like I'm pissed off and shit like that but, you know what I mean? I don't carry it on the next hour. <laughs> it's all fun and jokes and shit. And uh, you get over that shit because we're grown people. We're not here to act all childish over some little words, I yeah, guess you could say. Oh, I was just to be real, dude, like you got you got me my first built and everything, man. And just, I just can't thank enough for you, man. Like you helped me from the get go, dude. And you never left my side. So I appreciate every step that you give me, you know, and every second you do. So. <laughs> and I'm not making him like say that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like that's from like the bottom of his heart, you know what I'm saying? Like I, he 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 he's always he this guy I I've taught him the ropes 
along with a lot of the other friends that I met with this guy. And um, he's picked up a lot along the way, and every day he's still learning. He comes here, and I tell him, you're not just going to sit around and watch me do your shit. I'm going to have you learn the shit as we go so you would know for yourself if I'm not ever around to um, help you or not there all the time to help you. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I appreciate everybody who's who's came in my life, you know what I mean? But... You know, if, if you're going to go and do me dirty or whatever the case is, then, you know, it is what it is. It just kind of shows me who you are and, and I just kind of cut the connect and keep my life moving forward. I'm sorry about all the ranting and shit, but like I lost a lot of great people over some stupid ass shit. And most of the time it's me getting screw, screwed over at the end of the day. Um, but I forgive and I forget and I carry on. So let's let's carry on. Hey. So what I did was, I put a self-tapping screw at the end of the slide hammer, five pound, and I drilled, using my drill, some holes on that dent, and I used a slide hammer to slowly tap it out to uh, pull the dent outward, and I used my body hammer to kind of massage it flat and take form of the previous shape. So that's as far as I am going to pull that dent out because if I go any more, there won't be any metal left because that was a small dent. But that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna sand it all down with my grinder, get it all down to bare metal, get these uh, burrs nice and flattened out. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna weld it or if I'm just gonna glob bondo over it, given that the rest of the car has bondo all over it. I might just do that because it is a faster way of doing it, the wrong way to do it, but race car it's like 10 30 right now but i got all of the passenger side done one i got this one nicely reshaped you can see that nice hard line right there door has two and then the front of the fender body work for the most part is done i stripped all the um, masking tape because when you wet the masking tape and you leave it on there it becomes a lot tougher to take off because of its sogginess and um, you know the sticky portion of it you know separating from the tape itself so I removed it and um, plugged up the holes where it's rusted through I want to talk a little bit about tomorrow I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send it and if it rains it rains but I'm gonna try to at least paint 50% of the car um, the clear I'll do another day because we're talking about you know, water-based versus oil-based. I don't want the two to touch or overspray touch each other and react and, uh, you know, make the carbon fiber hood look all jacked up. So, um, we'll paint the hood another day, like Friday or whatever. Uh, but I want to paint at least, like, say, one side of the car. Both fenders, probably both fenders. And um, try to knock out the majority of it so it's not much to do within these last two to three days I have left to get this car ready. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, I couldn't reserve a trailer. So a buddy of mine was able to track down a trailer for me and uh, got me on the reserve for a trailer on Saturday. So i um, truly thankful for that. So that means the car is still going to track because I was stressed and pulling my hair out all day because of the fact of not getting a trailer in time. And also my drag wheels was shipped today and it's not gonna show up here until next week, which is a bummer. But if it came down to it, I will pull the tires off, put it on another set of 15 inch wheels and just rock those. Uh, I'm way ahead here. By the time you guys see this video, you're probably like a week behind and I want to get you guys caught up and take a break for a few days until we are all caught up on the videos on the channel and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for tonight and um, I'm on a crunch I am I am cutting it real close and tomorrow is gonna be a painting type of day hopefully I'm gonna have my, my heater prepped I'm gonna have my heater out I'm gonna have half of this tarped down so we can get the wind and the cold out of here and keep the heat inside to help cure the paint a tad bit we are under the canopy, so we're not worried about condensation. So I'm gonna cut today's video right here and uh, call it a night. If you guys like today's content, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you guys wanna stick around and see some more progress update, especially the pain portion, 
for the Rust-Oleum CRX. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys mañana. Peace out.